Welcome to a tutorial video on Unity 2023. Across multiple videos, we've been dealing with understanding Unity as a game engine. It drives the experience for a player. We also understand that we create game objects within Unity and we work with systems. The game objects receive data from systems via their components. By working with components, we can subscribe to particular systems that we want data from. We've now seen in a previous video how we can work with the Input Manager. We can deal with the Input System directly, but we can also deal with the Managed Input that Unity provides. By using certain categories of input, horizontal and vertical, we can get input from a player and have a game object move based on this input within a range negative one to one. Let's expand on that idea and now work with the Physics System. So we're interested in something called a collision. A collision happens within a game engine when two shapes occupy the same space. We call this a collision of their shapes or simply a collision. Collisions are often prevented in physics systems to allow things like a character to not pass through a wall, not pass through the floor, and other things like that. So we can create different types of physics collisions respond to those collisions and create more complex levels within Unity by understanding the connection between the physics systems and the physics components. So let's look at the example within this video. So returning to our square and circle, I am interested in seeing if these two shapes ever collide. To do this, I need knowledge of how the physics system works within Unity. So the physics system works as any other system works. It has data it passes to corresponding components that are part of game objects. So if I want to know what the physics system is doing in relation to a particular game object, I need a component that gets data somehow from that system. When it comes to working with collisions and working with physics systems, we have different possible shapes we can use. Each of these shapes have pros and cons, and generally we're interested in shapes, collision shapes in particular, that match the shapes of the things we're using. In other words, if I have a box, I probably want a box collider, a thing that does collisions. If I'm doing a circle, I want a circle collider, a thing that does collisions. So let's look at right here a square. We've got a square right here that's red. I want to get information from the physics system. So I'm going to come over here to the inspector view, come down to add component, and then down to physics 2D. Be sure not to go to physics, that's physics 3D. We're interested in 2D physics. We have lots of possible components, but again, we're interested in something that has to do with matching the shape we're using. I'm using a square, or in other words, a box, and so I'm interested in a box collider 2D. So if I add this component, I now have the ability to get information from the physics system for this particular game object. Now what I'm going to do is move over to the circle, come over here to the inspector view, and now add a slightly different physics shape. Add component, physics 2D, and now in this case a circle collider 2D. Now it's a little hard to see with this color, but the circle filled in this shape. If I move back over to the square, we can actually see the collider matches the shape. It fills up to the edges of the shape. So I'm interested in a box collider and a circle collider. Now we may think, based on just adding a collider to each shape, that they may now do physics things. And they are, but probably not in the way we expect. So let's go ahead and just play this to see it in action. So again, I'm interested in does one shape overlap with another or what we might call a collision. So let's go ahead and give this a second to refresh. Okay, now I'm moving around using the code I showed in a previous video. Nice, smooth moves. And, oh, um, hmm. By moving over the circle, nothing really is happening. So we obviously know then that the colliders are not the whole solution. They're probably part of the solution, but not the whole solution. What are we missing? Well, when it comes to physics, we need some type of mass 
or put in a mathematical term, we need a body. So we are checking to see if one thing collides with the next, but at least according to how the physics system works, and this is common across most physics systems and other game engines as well, we need some type of body because the body will contain important things that the physics system cares about. That is mass and gravity and other calculations. All of these go into whether or not something is moving into something else, whether or not it is colliding. So, okay, now we need a body. To add a body, we're going to be adding another physics 2D component. So I've got square selected over here, and with a box collider, remember the shape to the collider, we've got a box shape right here, I'm coming down and adding a new component. This time, physics 2D, scroll towards the bottom, and I'm adding a rigid body 2D. A rigid body is just saying that the shape is a solid. That is, it won't change as part of the collision. It's something that has a complete mass, and it won't do anything as a result of the collision. This is important because sometimes we're interested in creating physics bodies that act like springs or act like rope or all kinds of other potential things. Generally, though, things within 2D spaces are often rigid bodies, which means, again, they don't change when they collide with something else. Now, there's an interesting assumption Unity makes when we start to work with rigid bodies within physics systems. And I'm about to show you what this assumption is. So I've had this right here, and I'm going to go ahead and play and watch what happens to this red square over here. Oh, I wasn't pressing anything. I literally just clicked play and we watched it go. And something weird just happened. The assumption Unity made about the rigid body is that it will have a certain amount of mass, a value of 1. That's fine. It will also have a certain amount of linear drag, 0, a certain amount of angular drag, 0 0.05. Oh, and then it has something called gravity scale of 1. Default gravity scale of Earth. But we don't actually want that. I'm going to take this and set it to 0. And now let's play. Now it doesn't fall because gravity is not being applied to it, and I can still move it around as if there's no gravity. But now it has a rigid body, and so now something interesting happens. It has a body, and something else has a collider, and now a body is colliding with a collider. And also something weird's kind of happening. Notice as I attempt to kind of move into the circle, I'm kind of rotating it around. Well, this is because motion is being moved, being translated into rotation. So as I attempt to kind of move into this space, it is translating that into rotation. So what we need to do is we want to apply some constants. We want to say, hey, for x or for z, which would be a rotation in 2D, I want you to freeze that. Or in other words, square over here in the inspector view, down here in rigid body, come down to constraints, freeze rotation, and click Z. We don't want to rotate. So we come over here and we play again, and I attempt to collide with the circle. I won't collide into it, but I also won't rotate around it because we are not doing anything with Z. We are freezing that as a constraint. Okay, so we are responding to collisions by first creating a collider on the things we want to collide. I created a box collider on the box, a circle collider on the circle. I then added a body to the box. And this is where the calculations really come into play, because once it has a body, it has mass, and the physics system can do something with it. Things that don't have mass are very complicated to calculate when it comes to physics. So it has some mass, and now we can start making some calculations. So I'm going to go ahead and now move over to code. So reopen square. So I want to do something, or show a message, when I collide with something else. Well, we already know that when we work within scripting components, we have access to a bunch of different systems. We have already shown how we can work with the input manager to get information from the input system to then change the 
transform component's values before it's drawn again. What if we did something so that we showed a message when the collision was starting, or put in another way when it collision is interim, which is a more technical term. So I'm interested in adding another block of code, what we call a method, to our existing code. So outside of update, I'm going to press enter or return a couple of times, and then I'm going to type void on, and it's going to attempt to guess what I want, and I'm interested in on collision enter 2D. I'm going to go ahead and click this. Here it goes, and press tab. So I have on collision enter 2D, collision 2D, collision. It's a little bit confusing. I also have the word private, but I'm going to get rid of that for just right now. So what this says is this collision system, the physics system, when it happens, will send a message to anything that has a method called on collision enter, and we're interested in 2D. When this happens, it will send a message about the collision that happened. Within that collision will be what initiated the collision, what it collided with, and then we can do something with that information. So let me show you what we can now do. So I'm interested in debug and then log. And all we want to write is the word collision to the log. And remember, writing to the log means it will show up within the console view within the Unity editor. So let's go ahead and file save. So any time a collision happens, on collision, enter 2D, Every a collider, as this kind of tooltip tells us, is called when a collider 2D or a rigid body has begun touching another rigid body or another collider 2D physics only. So let's come back and allow it to reload everything. Give it just a minute. There it goes. And now we're interested over here. Go ahead and clear this. We're going to see hello, which is the first thing that's going to happen. Okay, so now we are moving around, and when we boop, 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 boop. But notice if I hold it down, if it looks like I'm moving into it, and I'm trying really, really hard to collide for it, I seem to be kind of bouncing back each time. Notice a kind of interesting bouncing that's happening. That bouncing that's happening is the physics system in play. Because the rigid body, or a body, is colliding with something that has a collider, because the shapes are attempting to overlap, the physics system is detecting that's happening and pushing it back. But it's pushing it back as part of its system, being drawn and then pushed back, being drawn and then pushed back, being drawn and then pushed back. Put another way, this is a very common occurrence when a character attempts to walk into a wall or is walking along the floor within a video game. It is continually pushing back the physics system, generally pushing back from the floor or from the wall to prevent that character from passing through some type of solid thing, or as we might call it in a physics term, a body. So a wall has a body, the character has a body, and the character of the wall is preventing the character of the body from passing through it which is what we're seeing take place right here. It's pushing it back a little tiny bit each time and preventing that from happening. The other thing we're seeing is on enter. So when the collision is first initially happening, we're seeing the message because we're interested in the entering event, not the reoccurring event. So every time this starts, which is the enter event, it's showing us a message. But notice it's not constant. If I attempt to move into there, I'm being pushed back and pushed back, but we're not seeing any new messages until it starts again, the start or entering of the collision. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Now, let's do something slightly different. I'm interested in, this time, the collider of the collision. So this is going to seem a little bit strange. So notice the tooltip tells us the incoming collider 2D involved in the collision with the other collider. So what in the world does this mean? Well, let's see what this tells us. And give 
Unity just a minute moment to reload. There we go. And boop, 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 boop. Notice it says collision, and then the collider, the thing we are colliding with, is the Circle Collider 2D. So we're not actually colliding with the shape, we're colliding with the thing that is defining the shape. And this is an important distinction, because sometimes, and in fact many times, the collider won't actually be on the shape, it will be near the shape and sometimes extending around the shape. If you've ever heard the term hitbox or hurtbox within video game development, this is what it's talking about. The collision extends slightly away from the actual shape. So notice right here, as we move, we are colliding with the collider. The two colliders are colliding, but the shapes themselves are not. So let's do something a little bit different to extend this idea. I'm going to come over to the circle. I'm going to come over and make sure the circle collider is selected right here. And I'm just going to move this very, very slightly. I want to edit collider, click on this. And I'm going to just drag this very slightly right here. Oops, we clicked away from it. And click this again to edit and make this a little bigger. There we go. Notice I'm clicking these little edges. Okay, so there we go. So now the circle collider is bigger than the actual shape or what we might call it in a game design or game developer terms, it's hit box. The thing that's hitting, the collider, is bigger than the shape itself. So as I approach the circle and the body of the square passes into the collider, it will now prevent it. Notice I'm not getting close to the shape, I'm responding to the collider. The physics system has no knowledge of the actual shapes. Remember, we're getting information from systems through components to game objects. So, as far as the different systems know, they don't care about any other system. They just contain the data themselves and they pass it to the very corresponding components from which we get that data in game objects. So, as far as the colliders are concerned, we asked it, hey, when this thing overlaps with this thing, tell me about it. And that's exactly what it did. So, as we think about the role colliders play, and especially the role collisions play within Unity, we can start to take that knowledge and use it in different ways. So let's say, again, we are interested in what I'm colliding with. Am I colliding with this thing, or potentially in a more complex project, am I colliding with a different thing? So let me give you a hypothetical example that's very common. Say you're designing a 2D platformer game you might be interested in, is the character colliding with the floor, the ground, or are they colliding with an enemy? Two different things. And so we are interested in that collision. Am I colliding with this or colliding with that? And we'll explore that in a future video. But for at least right now, we're interested in the response to a collision and how they occur within Unity. So let me talk, let me review and talk about what I've talked about in this video. So we're interested in now thinking about collisions. That is the overlapping of shapes. But now we know that isn't technically true. We're interested in the overlap of collisions. And within Unity, that's just another system. So we add corresponding components to a game object to gain access to those systems. We saw for Square that I added a box collider matching the shape. But I didn't necessarily have to do that, as we now know. I could have added a circle collider or other collider shapes available to us, but I added a box collider. Then I added a circle collider to the circle right here. Then on square, I added a body, which is the important part of the physics system. It needs mass in order to make calculations. And so by adding a rigid body, we saw that as soon as it had a body, or at least one thing had a body, the body to collider conflict was able to generate information for us. The other thing we took into play is automatically when we add a rigid body, Unity assumes we're interested in gravity, and in this particular example, we were not, and so we set gravity scale to zero, but if we were, potentially we could set it to one. 
And so now we understand that if we're interested in one thing overlapping with another thing, we call that a collision. In Unity, we need colliders to get collision information. In order for a collision to happen, one of the things doing the colliding needs a body. It has to have information about its mass to allow the physics system to make calculations about it. So we added a rigid body 2D to square as another component along with its box collider. Notice that as we add more components, we're using that information to make decisions. We're still using game objects, working with Unity, still working with systems, but now we're adding components to get information from other systems to now interact with even more systems. So as this project builds in complexity, we're still working with the same fundamental ideas, game objects, components, and systems, but now combining all of those as we build slightly more complex code across each video by working through how we do things within 2D, within Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.